Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. SpaceX recently had a mostly successful integrated flight test 3 of Starship and Super Heavy, and in honor of that, Pekka has released another version of his mod. And his mods now include not just Starship and Super Heavy, but also Firefly's Alpha, uh, Rocket Lab's Electron, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Vulcan, as well as some payloads. Uh, so a little bit more of a complicated mod, but everything's in its own little folder So if you want something in particular, you can just delete the other stuff uh, In the Pekka's mod folder, there is also craft files for Alpha, Electron, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship uh, So you don't have to build them from scratch, which in the case of Starship and Super Heavy is of course Especially complicated because of the launch tower uh, the surface stuff, the scenery that you see here, is integrated into my terrain mod for Boca Chica. Uh, the, the scenery stuff here, these uh, surface elements are actually Pekka's work, but they are part of my mod. And uh, same with the buildings back there. So uh, I'll link that in the video description as well. So this Boca Chica terrain, if you want to use that and that'll have the Kerbal Constructs stuff and you'll go into the Kerbal Constructs thing. Of course Kerbal Constructs is required and in the VAB you'll select Kerbal Constructs and select the correct launch pad in order to get it out here. Uh, but yeah, so two mods basically, the Boca Chica stuff and the mod from Pekka here are what we are representing, but we are not just re representing the launch, we are going to also try re-entry. Pekka has a re-entry script, but that's not part of the zip file on his GitHub uh, that is exclusive for now, and we are going to try that out. There is also a script for the return of Super Heavy that is not included. So those are special things that we have here. And yeah, let's see how that all works out. So run Starship. And we have to be careful, Atmospheric Allpot decided to enable itself because I pressed P when I was typing that in. But we're also going to press P again because we're going to type in Super Heavy and start the thing for Super Heavy's return, which won't activate until later. So now I disabled, I'm just going to press P a few more times to make sure that Atmospheric Allpot is disabled, otherwise it's going to mess things up. And you can see a countdown up there because the Various effects will change over time, and also uh, Super Heavy and st uh, Starship will fill up, uh, or apparently fill up. Of course, they're already full, technically, but the visual will show them filling up. And various things will happen as they should. Of course, in a sped up sort of way, compared to real life. Okay, we have ignition. The water, water deluge effect and launch. So I unzipped it directly from the version on the GitHub. So as far as the effects are concerned, this is what that includes. The only thing I'll be using that isn't included in there uh, are the KOS scripts for the Super Heavy and the Reentry. So we can see the waterfall plumes now and the various effects that are going on here. I'm not a specialist on the effects, that's Pekka's department, I'm just showing it off. Pekka works some magic to make them happen. You can see the plume flaring out. Okay, we have a shutdown of some engines, hot staging, and automatically Super Heavy should do its thing as Starship continues. You can see Super Heavy heading back, igniting the rest of its engines for the boost back. Not all of its engines, just the ones that are appropriate. And we continue. You can see the different plumes on this, uh, the surface ones versus the vacuum engines. Pekka did test the landing of Super Heavy. At a later time, I'll probably do a more cinematic video. This is just an explanation and you know introduction to the mod video, so that you can get it if you so choose. 
Currently it is carrying a payload. The Avgas represents about 125 tons, so very heavy. And the goal is to have this optimized. This is not representing Integrated Flight Test 3 in particular right now. This is optimized to carry a maximum amount of payload and really cut the margins fairly close here. So yeah, we're carrying 125 tons here, which we will kick out. Once we get to orbit and we will actually go to a full orbit here. Okay, we have the sea level engine shut down. Again, we're trying to optimize for payload, so we are going vacuum only. We don't have the particular issues that SpaceX seems to have, which explains why they keep the sea level engines on. Okay. And we are in orbit, roughly one and a half hour orbit, as I generally prefer. And opening cargo, opening the cargo bay, the big cargo bay, there's a big cargo bay. Uh, and we are going to release the payload, and then we're going to wait a day for the re-entry to line up back with Boca Chica. So, separation, backing off. Moving away, and now the cargo bay is sort of fixed so that we can actually get stuff out properly, thankfully. A kill rotation there. Much more usable. Okay, and then the return. And let me just make sure atmospheric pod is disabled. Also, there was a peculiar problem with physics range extender, but I've turned that off for now. So this is demonstrating that this mod is capable of re-entry. Actually getting it to re-enter is complicated though. So, yeah. As you might expect, the dynamics of Starship and how it controls itself with its flaps, it's complicated. Pekka has done a good job with this. Ignition of just one of the sea level Raptor engines here. That's to give it better control because just that has a lot of thrust to weight ratio. And in fact it shuts off and the RCS does the rest of it. Probably they'll just do the re-entry burn with the RCS and not with an engine. But uh, this does make it a little bit more accurate in terms of when we do the entry burn. We've done most of it at a very particular location that helps with the accuracy for landing. Okay, we are in the atmosphere and it's rolling to the right position. We are in line with Boca Chica, which is right there. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers. It seems to think it's falling short, so it's leaning a little bit lower. It varies, it seems, from uh, 45 well, 45-ish degrees to 75-ish degrees, with an average of 60. As far as IFT-3 is concerned, well, we got some interesting shots of plasma, didn't we? We can see some slight overheating. It's not overly heat-protected here. As we approach uh, Baja California and the Gulf of Mexico there, all in all, it's using fairly little fuel on its way down here. Some flat movements have begun, and it's using that to control itself partly. We're going up slightly at this bit, but not a whole lot. Currently, it seems to think it's going long, so it's pitched up. But now that it's going back down again, we didn't really go up much at all. Maybe you'll correct that. Yeah, it's pitching down again. So it was only because it was going up for a little bit that it pitched up. Still coming in nice and smooth here at 66 kilometers, 55 degrees pitch. Slowing down evenly, not overheating. It's pitched up a little bit more and we can sort of see the location of our landing site. 
And that's where Boca Chica is right there. Let's see if it can make it. It's trying hard to slow down here. We do have some plasma effects now. Seems pretty good actually when you think about it. The plasma effects. Okay, below 2,000 meters per second, 42 kilometers in altitude, and coming in. In this part of the atmosphere, it slows down rather quickly. But we might be going long, maybe? I don't know, maybe it's okay. Starship is a bit strange, <laughs> as far as compared to the other stuff I've blown in. Okay, yeah, well, we're not, we're not long, not in particular. We've slowed down so much, it's basically in a free-fall stall. You can see the vertical speed is most of our speed. We've got some horizontal speed, but it's definitely diving here. Okay, well now it's converted some of that to horizontal speed. The vertical speed is not too high, but are we going a little bit far? I don't know. Sort of pointed at it. It's, you know, a huge empty body, so actually it's fairly buoyant in the atmosphere. Yeah, right now we're in free fall again. Very little horizontal speed. Yeah, Pekka's done an excellent job with this re-entry script here. But let's see if it can stick the final phase of it. You can see there's the orbital launch mount. We're not going to get caught by the chopsticks. And thankfully we didn't knock into the chopsticks, but we're like right there. Goes to one. And there you have it, folks. So it can come back. At least in Kerbal Space Program it can come back. And yep, that's P.E.K.K.A. Starship and Super Heavy Mod and other things as well. But it still has 125 meters per second left in here, which is impressive too. It didn't have that much delta V uh, in orbit. It didn't use a whole lot coming down. So all right, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.